Welcome to worship. Uh, you may notice that the front of our sanctuary has changed. We had been enjoying what was first the Easter Garden since March, um, but now we have left the order of a nice, fancy garden and have entered the wild places of the world. So today we'll be talking about forests, and over the next few weeks we'll be talking about wilderness and land and rivers. And finally, the first weekend in October, we'll be hosting an outdoor worship service, which will be a blessing of the animals. So if you have critters and pets in your life that bring you joy and you wish to have a blessing, um, I hope that you'll mark that on your calendar. Plus, it'll be the first time that we have gathered for any kind of in-person worship since all of this began back in March. So I am simply looking forward to being able to see smiling faces or masked faces, um, but to simply be in the, in the physical presence of uh, those that I care about. So we gather virtually, though, and the Spirit of God unites us together, even though we may be sitting in different places. I hope that if you are on a tablet or on a phone, you might take worship outdoors and sit beneath a tree as we talk about forests today. And so now, I invite you to step from the ordinary into the extraordinary as we worship God together. Ideally, during this season of creation, our worship would take place outdoors in an actual forest or thicket of trees. But unfortunately, that is impossible. However, maybe this morning you will take your phone or tablet and sit beneath the branches of a tree. I hope so. Wherever we are, we invite creation to join us. We invite the forests to worship with us. Mountain ash and vibrant maples, quivering ferns and glistening moss. We invite tall trees to celebrate life to lift green leaves in the breeze and sing their oxygen into the air. We call to the forest to sing in the night, green tree frogs and timid moths, butterflies and swirling bats. We join with the fauna of the forest in praising God, red-winged blackbird and hummingbirds, creeping things and butterflies. We celebrate the song of the forest and all God's creation that call it home. Sing, forest, sing. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we come into your presence to worship this sanctuary called Earth. Our planet is pulsating with your presence, a presence quivering in the forests, a presence vibrating in the land, a presence effervescent in the wilderness, a presence shimmering in the rivers. God, reveal yourself to us wherever we are and show us your presence in all creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today we'll be reading from the second chapter of Genesis. Ver, uh, chapter 2, verses 4b through 9, and then picking up with chapter 15, or verse 15 verse, through uh, 22. In the day that the Lord God made the heaven and the he earth, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground 
and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It's not good for the man that, for that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground... The Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them and whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. So there are two stories in Genesis. There's the version in chapter 1 and the beginning of chapter 2 that really gets more attention. When we are um, talking about the story, we like to talk about the six days of creation and the seventh day of rest. But this is the second story that we find in creation that was written. This version that we read today, it views creation in a slightly different way. Man is created first, and then the garden, and later the animals, and then finally the woman. God creates the first human from earth and spirit and plants a forest garden to be a home with the rest of our kin in creation. Now, as I read this verse 7, every time I read it, I can picture the hands of God forming that first human being. I used to spend a lot of time in ceramic studios. And I know that when you get into the mud, even those of us that garden, we know you cannot plant a flower or dig into the soil without getting dirt under your nails. And so when I picture God doing this, I see him in there with his hands covered in mud, with the mud under his fingernails, carefully forming the first human. The other thing about making something out of clay is you have to be very, very patient. Because if you try to rush the process, you end up with broken shards instead of a beautiful vessel. So God lovingly created this vessel that we call a body. And the Lord breathed into it and brought life to it. Humanity, people, were born of earth and spirit. And the spirit of God, Ruha, is the source of life. For without God's spirit, we are only dust. But before God created us, he created the earth. The earth was God's first creation. And from the earth, from the dust and the clay and the soil, Plants and trees were made to grow, with their roots digging deep down to get the nutrients and the moisture that they need. Think for just a moment about that. That that which sustains the plants and the trees is the same stuff that we are made from. That's kind of amazing, isn't it, when you stop and think about it? Well... Once the trees have done that, and they've dug their roots in, and they've cast their foliage, what do the trees create? 
They create the very air that we breathe. The, bre the breath that we need to survive comes from trees. The forests are the lungs of the earth itself. Their roots digging into the earth that we are formed from and their foliage creating the air that we breathe. God creates all things, renews all things, and celebrates all things. And God made all things to care for and to rely on each other. Genesis tells us in this chapter that we just read that human beings were given the job to till the earth and to keep or tend the garden. So God has created this Eden, has created our earth, and it is a sanctuary, a sacred planet filled with God's presence. It's a home for us, but it's a home that we were intended to share with the flora and the fauna. So as we read the Bible, we find many of its writers, they speak of the splendor and the beauty and the wonder of trees. Literally, from the Bible's first chapter to its last, we find beautiful scriptures that reveal spiritual truths about humanity and God. So this story of creation that we just read, the one that we find in this second chapter, it calls us to see God's hand at work in the forming of the world. Literally, God putting his hands into the soil and forming creation. And one of the things God created was this gift of this amazing planet blessed with trees. Now, not only do the trees bless us with air, they also provide for humans and our economy. They supply us with food and with building materials and with paper and fuel and more. But before we take anything from the trees for ourselves, they have already given us more than air. These forests that cover our planet are where the land-born species that God created live. These species, they live in the trees, they live on the trees, they live around the trees, they live beneath the trees. These animals, this is where they dwell, is in and around the trees. And like all of us, these creatures, they rely on trees for life. The trees are their shelter. The trees are their sustenance. So, how are we caring for this most incredible and vital part of creation? So far in 2020, the number of forest fires across the globe is up 13%. And we're on a pace to surpass 2019, which was a record year for forest fires. According to experts from the World Wildlife Fund and Boston Consulting Group, persistent hotter and drier weather due to climate change and other human factors such as land conversion for agriculture and poor forest management are the main drivers behind this increase. And the same experts, they tell us that climate change and wildfires mutually reinforce each other. And the fires burning today in many parts of the world are bigger, they're more intense, and they last longer than they used to. The same experts warn us that if current trends continue, there'll be devastating long-term consequences for people, for wildlife, and our, and our climate. The greater number and the more intense fires, for example, they release extra carbon into the atmosphere, they decimate biodiversity, they destroy vital ecosystems, they impact economies and people, they threaten property and livelihoods, and they cause severe long-term health problems for millions around the world. Perhaps you recall two very notable forest fires from 2019 one that happened in Australia and another that happened in the Amazon. 
As the fires raged, we saw images of scorched koalas and flocks of fleeing tropical birds with nowhere to go. Of course, the great forests aren't just disappearing due to fire. Humanity is clear-cutting forests with wanton disregard for the impact on our forest kin and the very survival of our world. And it isn't just the great forests and far lands that are disappearing. In our desperate need for new, we have bulldozed trees in order to build. We have destroyed the homes of our furry and feathered kin in order to pave and construct tracts of suburban sprawl. I will never forget the words of a conservationist I once heard. Someone who had cared for a forest and one day arrived to find that his beloved acres of woodland had been clear cut and the wood had been piled. And he said as he gazed upon those piled trees, it was as if he was staring at the body of his friends. So what is the creation story that we are writing right now? The Eden that used to flourish is now clear cut or burning. The writer of the creation story we read today said that in the place God created man, that there were two sacred trees. You remember in the reading, there were two trees that the writer called out. One was the tree of life, and the other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the writer, later in the Uh, chapter, he says that man's first sin was eating the fruit of the tree. But I think the greatest sin is that we have forgotten the knowledge that we learned in the garden. For it was there that we learned to know the difference between what is right and what is wrong. And it all began with a tree. For it was there that we learned God's grand design that we call earth for each part of creation depends on another. And now God's creation is becoming a failing system because we have fallen short of the task that God has given us. We see many suffer because of human crimes against creation. The forests which which create the air that we breathe and our home to our kin are going up in smoke and being torn down at an alarming rate. Now this story, this creation story that humanity is writing right now, it makes me really angry. I feel a righteous anger for what we are doing to our planet. And when I'm angry, I try to just take a deep breath and relax. And in that breath, I am reminded that without the trees, I would have no breath. And my anger, it turns to grief. And in those moments, I try to go to my happy place. Everybody has this happy place. A place where we can close our eyes and all is right with the world. Can you remember the happy places of your childhood? Or maybe your happy place now, the garden or the forest, the place where you played maybe in the past, that place where you felt close to the earth, close to the trees and our kin. I used to spend hours outdoors under the trees watching the ants carrying their leaf pieces back and forth or watching the bird build its nest Maybe you remember playing under a shady tree, that great big one in the backyard that covered the entire yard. Maybe you climbed in its branches or just leaned against the bark and felt it against your back as you read a book or you daydreamed. In those sacred, disappearing spaces, We are reminded that every creature in their own unique way joins us in praising God. 
In forests, the animals and the birds with hoots and twitters and howls and the rustling of their bodies against the leaves, that is how they offer their prayer. And they sing their own hymns, for they have never forgotten how important the trees are. In their own way, they offer their thanksgiving and ask for interventions as they peer from branches and look up from roots that are part of their forest home. God invites us to come home to the earth, to not think of it as simply a place or a resource, but to care for this planet, to care for it with love, to nurture the forest as God has nurtured us, and to join in the healing of creation. The forest is offering us clean air to breathe. What will you offer in return? Will you pray with me? Loving creator, it is right to give you thanks. Your word is the impulse for all things to be, for space and stars and stardust to appear, for earth to emerge from the deep, for the life to be born of earth, and for humans to be born of earth and in spirit. You chose humans to be your servants on earth, to care for our garden home. We regret that we have become alienated from earth and had treated this garden as a beast to be tamed, as domain to be dominated, and as a place to be ruled over for our gain. We remember and we confess how we have violated and polluted the forest in our garden planet. We have ignored the distant sounds in the forest, the sound of chainsaws, clearing for greed and gain, the sound of those old forests falling over, and the sound of rare species breathing their last. We're sorry. Holy One, teach us to empathize with the earth. Make our spirits sensitive to the cries of creation, cries for justice from the hills and the trees. Make our faith sensitive to the groans of the spirit, groans from the deserts and the plains and the winds. Make our souls sensitive to the call of our kin, species in pain calling from land and sea and air. In all ways, God, teach us to care. Your spirit is the life impulse in all things. It can restore the broken and heal the wounded. And we call out in anticipation of a new creation. And we yearn for new life born of earth and spirit. We lift up to you, God, those family and friends who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray for your healing to be with those whose minds and bodies and spirits are broken. We ask that your spirit will touch those in our community who need to be restored, recreated, and reborn. May they find the strength of a mighty oak and the peace of a shimmering birch leaf and a sense of connection like great roots of the giant sequoia. Our prayers, God, continue to be with teachers and students and staff and parents who are striving to find the right mix of safety education, and community. We pray for our nation that feels so divided. Help us to learn from the example of the forests where many species find a home and thrive despite their differences. Lord, help our leaders and those of every nation make decisions that are wise and compassionate, decisions that protect your creation, the planet and people and animals and plants that you so lovingly made. And now, God, we lift our voices in prayer, in the prayer that Jesus taught us, 
offering it in the language of our hearts, saying, Our Creator, who is in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The earth is filled with God's presence, the creator, the fountain of life, Jesus, the pulse of life, and the spirit, the breath of life, are all around us. And everywhere God is, there are blessings to be found. Sometimes the greatest praise we can offer God for our blessings is to simply stop what we are doing and marvel at the incredible trees that surround us. Other times we offer our praise simply by lending a hand to somebody in need. And other times we show our gratitude for our blessings by not buying things we don't need and not using products that harm the earth. Just as God is everywhere, so are opportunities to give our thanks for the blessings that surround us. Today and every day, offer your gifts to the Lord with joy, thanksgiving, and gratitude. Let us pray. God, our creator, through your love, you have given us gifts of time, talent, and treasure to share. Accept our offerings as expressions of our thanksgiving and as signs of our concerns for those in need, including our fellow creatures on planet Earth. With thanksgiving for the gifts and the giver, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heather's sermon today, really, I could really relate to it. The importance and the beauty of nature. It's been a very important part of my life, and it's all around us. And just take a moment to look, even in your own backyards, to see the beauty around you. God's presence is the living power in all things, filling the earth, land, sea, and air, every element and place, and filling the grain and grape we take in remembrance of Jesus this day. Come to the table with all your kin and share with all those in need. Come and find the gift of healing for those in pain, the gift of forgiveness for those who have sinned, the gift of assurance for those in doubt, and the gift of hope for those in tears. Come to the table and let the power of Christ reach deep into your heart your mind, your body, to heal your wounds and through you to bring healing to earth. 
Let us come to the table of the Lord. During this season of creation, we have a special communion table. These uh, log pieces that you see before you actually came to earth because of the derecho that came through um, back at the beginning of August. And they are a reminder of how fragile even the mighty trees can be. All of us can be very fragile at times. We get blown around. Sometimes it's easy to break, to cave, to pressures around us, to allow society to dictate what is important instead of turning to God's way and follow, following Jesus. Jesus knew that there would be times when we would be blown too far and that we would turn away from the path that he had set before us. So he gave us reminders that were easy to find that would help us return to him, to return to his way. As he gathered with his disciples, he took bread and broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat. Let this bread remind you of my body. And he took a cup and he gave thanks for it and he gave it to them and he said, drink from it all of you. I will not drink of this cup again until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of heaven. This is the bread of life, and this is the cup of hope. All are welcome and invited to the table. Let us pray. God, our creator, whose glory fills our planet, may our communion with you help us discern your vibrant presence among us and our presence in creation especially in the mysteries of the forest. Forgive us for the times we have abused your creation, the earth and our kin. Help us to empathize with your creatures who are suffering and to serve you as agents for healing your creation. Give us the courage to be a voice for the voiceless and to offer our strength to the helpless. Show us each and every day how to be true followers of Christ and live lives of selfless love the way he did. In the name of Christ, who reconciles and restores all things in creation. Amen. Amen. So now wherever you are, whether sitting beneath the branches of a tree or at your dining table, take the bread, eat, and remember. And now take the cup, drink, and remember. Thanks be to God.
So it has been suggested, and I think it would be fun, not during the sermon, mind you, when you are watching, find the little things that are hidden throughout our little wilderness scene here, the birds and the butterflies, even a bear and some deer antlers that have been brought in to remind us that God's creation is as wonderful and diverse as we could ever imagine. It is so beautiful the way it all works together. As we learned the song in the, the movie, The Lion King, the circle of life, how each thing is dependent upon another. I hope that song gets stuck in your head this week and you'll be humming it, that you'll be reminded of our place within a greater whole and our place as caregivers that God has given to you. So I offer you all your hug. I'm praying for all of you that one day soon we will be able to embrace again. But until then, let us be safe and well. Now I invite you to receive the blessing. Lord God, we have gathered in this virtual sanctuary from near and far to worship you. And now we go into the world to serve you. May we hear the hymns of creation and the prayers of our forest kin and do what we can to be good caregivers of all that you have entrusted to us. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a very blessed week.